Okay, welcome back. In this video, we are going to look at how to verify a sum and difference identity. So verifying an identity essentially means that you want to prove through use of um, using the identities that one side of an equation equals the other. So essentially this is like doing um, a proof. And so here we're trying to prove that the left equals the right. So usually when you're trying to do a proof, the easiest thing to do is to start with the most expanded side and see if you can kind of um, condense it down in some way or be able to combine terms to get them to cancel. So here if you look at this first one here, I have the sine of beta minus theta plus the sine of beta plus theta equals 2 sine of beta cosine of theta. So here what I have, if you notice, is this first term here is actually a difference, whereas the second term here is a sum. So I want to take each of these and I want to expand them out to see if I can combine anything together or cancel. So I have beta minus theta. So what I have to remember here is that in this problem my u term is equal to beta, my v term is equal to the theta. So I have sine minus, so difference. So in this case my difference, okay, so sine of u minus v is going to be the sine of u, the cosine of v, minus the cosine of u, the sine of v. Well, the opposite is going to happen when I have my sum. So if I have the sine of u plus v, this is going to be the sine of u, the cosine of v, plus the cosine of u, sine of v. So what I did here, the first thing I did was I identified the actual identities that I need to try and use in my problem. So now what I want to do is I want to actually put these identities into my problem and see what happens. So I have my difference first, and remember my u is beta, my v is theta. So here this is going to become the sine of beta, the cosine of theta, minus the cosine of beta, the sine of theta, and I'm going to add this to my sum. So this is going to become the sine of beta, the cosine of theta, plus the cosine of beta, the sine of theta. Now my hope is that this is going to end up somehow equaling 2 sine of beta, cosine beta, cosine theta. So what I want to do is I want to look and see if I can rearrange this. So I'm going to group my two sine terms together because sine first, and then I'm going to group my cosine terms together. So I'm going to have the sine of beta cosine of theta, and this is going to be plus the sine of beta, the cosine theta, then I've got minus the cosine of beta sine theta plus the cosine of beta sine of theta. So if you look closely, notice I have minus the cosine beta sine theta plus cosine beta sine theta. That means these two terms will cancel each other out. Now if I look here, I have sine beta cosine theta sine beta cosine theta. So how many of these do I have? Well, I have two sine beta cosine theta, which equals what I wanted, two 
sine beta, cosine theta. Therefore, I have proven my little proof. And so here what I showed is that through the use of my sine identity, I was able to prove that the left hand side really and truly does equal the right hand side. All right, let's take a look at one more here. So here I've got the sine of five pi over six plus theta is equal to one half cosine theta minus the square root of three sine of theta. So the first thing I would do is I again would take a look at this left hand side. I'd leave this other side alone because I don't have any identities for that right now. So I'm going to take a look here at this left hand side and I'm going to notice that this is the same as the sine of u plus v which equals the sine of u, the cosine of v, plus the cosine of u, the sine of v. And I promise the more that you write these identities over and over again, the faster you're going to memorize them and they'll become second nature. So with this, if you take a look, notice here, my u is equal to five pi over six, my v is equal to theta. So I need to go ahead and plug this in. And so here, I'm gonna end up getting sine of five pi over six, cosine of theta, plus cosine of five pi over six, sine of theta. And remember, I am hoping that this is going to equal that one half cosine of theta minus the square root of three sine of theta. So let's see what we can figure out here. I have five pi over six. My hope is that I can evaluate something with it. So the first thing I'm going to do is reference again to my unit circle. And I'm looking to see if I have five pi over six. And in this case I do. Notice it falls here at 150 degrees. So this would be the reference angle that falls right here in my second quadrant. If you remember reference angles, you take 180 minus your angle, it gives you the reference. So this is a reference angle of 30 degrees. Here are my coordinate points, and I want to ne um, take note of them mostly because of the negative signs. So in this case, I have uh, my reference, so I'm gonna go ahead and draw that in. And so here my triangle would be drawn over this way here in quadrant two. So here's my angle. And some things that I know about it is I know that this is going to be five pi over six, which has a reference of 30 degrees. And so here my radius is one, my um, x value is negative square root 3 over 2 and my y value is going to be 1 half. Okay, so there is my triangle. And so with that, I know that I can evaluate my sine at 5 pi over 6. And so here's my angle. So the sine would be opposite over hypotenuse. And so this is going to end up being one half. So I'm going to reduce this. This now becomes one half cosine of theta. And now I want to look at the cosine. So I'm going to add this together and I have the cosine of five pi over six. So cosine again is adjacent over hypotenuse. So this would be negative square root three over two. And then this is sine of theta. Okay. And so here, if I look, notice both of these have this two in the denominator. So I can go ahead and pull out that one half. It's going to leave behind the cosine of theta. 
I have plus the negative, so the negative overrides minus the square root of 3 sine of theta. And so thus, I have proven that these two are equal. So here we have that these two here are equal. And therefore, we have shown or answered your problem, okay? Thus proving the identity, okay? So if you have any questions on these two examples, or if you feel like you want to see some more examples on proving identities of the sum or difference um, identity problems, please let me know and I'd be more than happy to do those for you. Otherwise, I do hope you enjoyed yourself as much as I did. Remember to be creative when attacking your identities. Um, always refer to that unit circle and do draw your triangles. Even though they seem tedious, they will help you out the further you get along. Um, with that, I look forward to seeing you next time.